Hey everybody, I want to talk about a issue that I've noticed with the Sony A95L. Starting off with this part of the Witcher, no problem, most scenes are like this, no issue really to complain about at all. However, in certain HDR or Dolby Vision scenes, especially with streaming content, there does seem to be an issue. Before I get to that, let's also touch on Dolby Vision and what updates have fixed. So currently what you're seeing is Spirits of Monzol test, dynamic range low, and HDR10, pretty much the same as before, where you get pretty good gradient all the way to the bottom, or very close to it. Uh, colors do have a bit of undersaturation or desaturation uh, as you get closer to black. However, in Dolby Vision, as my previous video showed, there is some banding, doesn't quite do nearly as well near black, that is still here. So besides this one, Dolby Vision Dark, which is supposed to be the accurate one, uh, would lift the EOTF and everything would be brighter than it should be. That is still the same. That has not changed either. However, the update, uh, I think two updates ago, did fix the toggling of the tone mapping settings while in Dolby Vision, and there's a distinct difference now between Dark, Bright, and Vivid. So you'll see me toggling through those different options on the next cut here. But I do want to move on now and start talking about the issue that this video is mainly about, and that is a pink and green posterization that is showing up uh, in certain scenes, and it changes with luminance. So, for example, if you were to use Dolby Bright, which is definitely less accurate than dark, uh, but it's brighter, it's going to shift where the pink and green is in certain scenes. So. It may appear to help in some scenes, but then it can make other scenes now have the issue where they wouldn't before. So relying on that is not a fix. It's just a way to see it actually shifting, which I will demonstrate shortly. Uh, what I'm showing right now is I was using the NVIDIA Shield and by default, it's going to be TV led Dolby Vision. If you go into developer options, you can enable low latency or player led Dolby Vision. Now doing this, you can still see the pink and green is still there. Uh, in this particular image, we're looking at the wall in the back. Do note the camera is going to make this look worse than it does in person, but still in person, it is visible. Uh, anyway, in motion, it seems that the player-led Dolby Vision has less posterization than the TV-led Dolby Vision. However, that also just may be due to variances in luminance between the two, kind of hard to say. Now, if I switch to HDR10, uh, it is still there. It's closer, I would say, to the player-led Dolby Vision, where it's not quite as bad as the TV-led, but again, it's, they're also just not great either way. Here, I'm also toggling between game PC and back to video mode. Video actually does seem the best because it has working smooth gradation on low, which does kind of help. Uh, but now you can see if I go to SDR, uh, specifically YUV SDR, it's there's basically no issue at all uh, it's very clean and i specify yuv sdr uh, also because with tv led dolby vision it's going the tv is going to see it as an rgb signal with player led dolby vision the tv is going to see it as a yuv signal now when i will show shortly also in this video uh, if you send rgb sdr then you still have the same issues so that kind of leads me to believe that there seems to be at least worse or the issue is accentuated uh, when the TV is seeing an RGB source. This is really pointing out to me that this has to be a processing issue uh, because on discs, I'm having a very hard time finding anything like this at all. Uh, and also the Samsung S95C uses the same panel, doesn't have this issue at all. And what you're seeing currently is the opening scene of Bly Manor. And this is where I'm toggling between Dolby Bright, Dark, and the different tone mapping settings. And you can see how the pink and green in that fog uh, will shift depending on the brightness of the image. Now we're in HDR10. And again, it's not quite as bad as Dolby Vision, especially when it's in motion. And if you're using TV LED or what's typically the better version of Dolby Vision, uh, then the HDR10 is slightly better. And then if I switch to, again, SDR YUV, really no problems at all, very clean. Which brings up another anomaly, not so much with this TV, just with 
shooting this TV with the camera. So, you know, I have a Sony FX30 and I have a manual white balance and the Dolby Vision and the SDR seems fine. I have no idea why this is happening, but whenever I record in HDR10, it makes it look redder. Now I know, and we have said many times, that a QD OLED looks redder on camera, and that is true if you don't have a proper white balance tool. The Sony cameras actually do have that, and I do have a specific way of white balancing, and that's why, specifically in SDR and Dolby Vision, I can get the white balance to match fairly well to what I see in person. You can see here how like the whole image just shifts red uh, in HDR10, so that kind of makes it harder to see the you know, difference here with the pink tint. Um, but just do note that that red shift seems to be some anomaly uh, with recording the TV uh, that I will have to investigate further uh, when I have time. So while this isn't a super common issue, uh, it does show up in enough content that it is an issue and I think is the currently the biggest flaw of the A95L that does need to be addressed. Uh, here is a scene from episode two of Loki. And if you look up towards the light, especially, you can really see how uh, the posturization with motion uh, is really bad. And then that's where if I switch to player LED, while it's still there, it doesn't seem as bad in motion as when it's in TV LED Dolby Vision. And then when I go over to SDR, I'm gonna show SDR, RGB, and YUV on this scene. You can see currently with HDR10, it does have that red shift because of the camera, not the TV, uh, but the posterization seems a little bit less in HDR10 than in Dolby. And then when I go to SDR, I'm gonna put it in RGB, so this down here, and you can really see that posterization is really bad if it's RGB, even in SDR. But then when I switch SDR to YUV, uh, then it's really clean, no problem at all. And so while I have been picking up on this in streaming content on discs uh, or like gaming, uh, ha really haven't. I have a bunch of discs that I'm gonna go through and see if I can find anything like this happening on the discs. Um, I don't have any of these shows on disc. I may pick up like Loki or something just to double check and see. But now if I go back to 1917, my typical dark scene uh, stress test here, I tested in Dolby Vision, HDR10, SDR, um, really nothing different than before and really couldn't find any issues like what I'm seeing with the streaming. However, when I did this, I actually found kind of an odd issue. I, out of curiosity, wanted to check SDR against the HDR10 and Dolby Vision. And when using the 4K Blu-ray, it is completely crushed horribly, even though the this is not the TV's fault, this is just the grade on that 4K disc in SDR. Because if I throw in the 1080p Blu-ray, which is also SDR, this is how it should look. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Sometimes the grading just doesn't turn out right. So I have passed this information off to Sony. My A95L review is still in the works as I continue to find things to cover. Uh, so I will probably have multiple short videos like this covering some issues like testing if it dims down in gaming. So here's a little teaser of that. I will be testing not just dimming in gaming, but also sports and other content. And uh, I can tell you that it may not be what you think. Um, so look out for that video uh, in the next few weeks when I get it done. And then this will also give time for new updates to come out and hopefully issues like what's presented in this video or some of the remaining Dolby Vision issues will be addressed in those future updates. TV is also still kind of buggy. Um, it has gotten better than when it launched, uh, but I know with certain devices connected, uh, certain people do have some compatibility issues, HDMI issues, and so on. So hopefully more of that gets ironed out as well. And then I will have my long-term review uh, in the next, I don't know, maybe month or so. But if I had to say at this point, I would say I do still believe that this is the best available TV that you can buy. I just think that for most people, it's not really worth the extreme cost compared to some other options that get very close or beat it in certain things um, like you know the S9DC, which is about half the cost and gets very, very close in most things and does better in some things. Um, but again, overall, it's still an excellent TV. There are just a few issues that hopefully get fixed. So, all right, I hope this video helped you out. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, keep an eye out for future videos. 
let me know in the comments below what you think of this and uh, i'll catch you all again soon in the next one hope you all have a great new year and i'll talk to you later